Okay, so b before that works, um, I just want to apologize first, so I might look a little bit tired. Um, it's not because I partied through the whole night, it's actually because our flight just arrived six hours ago, and we were actually one day delayed, so if I say something that doesn't make really sense to you during the talk, I encourage you to ask questions, because it might actually be that it doesn't make sense. Okay, uh, with that out of the way, um, hi one, I'm Daniel, I'm from Beijing, where I'm researching on industrial communication and automation. My private time, I'm working a little bit on MRuby, and I would like to share a little bit about a small hobby project I have worked on a couple of uh, months, um, a couple of last months. So, um, when I just came here, actually, someone asked me uh, with this title if I'm going to make fun of Ruby on Rails or so. Um, obviously, that's not going to happen. Um, it would be a little bit uh, low taste. Um, we are really going to literally talk about wheelchairs and how to put Ruby on it. And uh, there's essentially two things you could, should keep in mind for the talk, and I hope in the end for the conclusion, um, if you do not agree with me, you um, now confront me with some questions. So the first thing is, of course, why should I actually talk about Ruby on, uh, on wheelchairs? And the second question you should keep in mind is, why should you actually care about this topic? So, um, as you see, at the moment I can actually work, but obviously for all of us, it's only uh, temporarily. So um, I was not so fortunate some time ago, uh, where I actually um, broke my ankle. So I landed up in a wheelchair for uh, quite some while, and yeah, it was quite painful, but the pain went away, it was the painkiller. And uh, the um, doctors gave us a wheelchair, and I thought, okay, that should work. So, well, uh, my wife didn't think so, because she had actually to roll me back all the way from the hospital back to home, and. Um, it, I could easily convince her at that point to actually go shopping uh, to get actually a better wheelchair, so an electrical one. Um, the wheelchair I bought is um, just actually the, the lowest type you can have, so um, you can imagine these wheelchairs are very primitive. They have two wheels, two motors, have a big battery and a controller. And after using it for a while I was thinking, um, it would be cool actually to exchange this controller with something I have totally control of. So, that thing cannot be software updated, there can be no viruses on it, so it's leaking a lot of features, so we can improve on that. So, um, as a first start, um, we had of course to look on what do we want to do, we want to control motors, so um, before I actually cut apart the wheelchair, I was actually uh, making some tests, um, is it actually possible? So, the left side is actually a DC motor usually used for the efficiency, and it actually works in a fairly easy way. So, you are switching polarity from um, the direction, and the rest is just power. Um, sadly, I didn't have something like that at home except for the wheelchair, so I played with um, a smaller stepper. So, a stepper motor is essentially a motor where you have coils you uh, control individually, and the direction is um, controlled by choosing which coil to activate. So, um, so I made a small little uh, a demo, so I used for that um, obviously MRuby. Um, I had some small microcontrollers, so Yuki Matsumoto was mentioning small systems and mentioned something like two gigabyte or 512 megabytes. But as a matter of fact, these devices here those are something like 192 kilobytes of RAM, so MRI would never work on that. So um, MRuby uh, is the only choice to go for here, and um, I actually implemented uh, quite some years ago uh, the IRB for MRuby and ported them also to these microcontrollers. So if you are interested about it, there's actually another talk two years ago at Ruby Kage about this topic. Um, so, um, it is actually possible, it's not too difficult in the end, and so I was playing around, it's very comfortable to use the IRB here, um, which is actually not normal for embedded systems. So, I, many of you might do web development and you use IRB probably all the time. In embedded system, that's quite common that you actually have this huge cross-compiling uh, cycle, so it takes quite long to iterate. Okay, so um, I feel confident en enough that I say, okay, le let's cut my wheelchair apart. And uh, obviously, I remember, I could still not walk, so I really had to make that work at, at this point. So, um, the, the architecture I changed a little bit, so I, I dropped away the whole um, uh, controller. I actually tried in the beginning to automate the controller, but that didn't work out. So I bought a new controller, and I used an STM32, which is a very small ARM processor, so it's not an ARM processor you have in your iPhone, it's something like an ARM Cortex-M3, which is very small, very cheap, and very uh, low in power consumption. I put MRuby on that one, the, the stepping algorithm is very similar to what I had already implemented on the stepper, 
and um, it actually happened that it was very easy to get started. And in the end, actually, you will notice that this was actually the most easiest part uh, of all to make it run. So obviously, this is now only done uh, via IRB. Obviously, I don't want to control the wheelchair via IRB. So the next thing was to build up a proper architecture for the wheelchair. So I had a drive system in the bottom. I added, of course, the second motor with a second motor controller. I then uh, decided to use a um, Raspberry Pi, but um, I also played around with some other microcontrollers in the higher arm class and put MRI on that one, actually, because it's actually powerful enough. And then I had, uh, on top of that one, a um, user interface, which actually could be used by different devices, because I didn't want it to depend just on one device. So it was just an example when I'm sitting on my wheelchair and I'm trying to debug the wheelchair, my wife can just get out her mobile phone and drive me back home, for example. Uh, as a use case. So to go a little bit more in detail for the architecture, um, so I have the motor controller on the very bottom. Um, I wrote um, this drive system, um, some kind of broker. Um, that's maybe because of my background in signaling systems. So I was a little bit afraid what happens if I have a bug in endless loop and the wheelchair just accelerate. So I, honestly, I over-engineered at the beginning a little bit because I wanted to actually have an automatic braking system if I do not get any controls anymore. Then I implemented a serial driver, which then talks to something called Z2Net. It's actually a very interesting standard program. So it's just a C program you run on embedded devices or Linux systems, uh, which actually maps serial communication to UDP or TCP uh, or, um, uh, sockets. And with that, you actually modulize very nicely away um, the whole uh, drive system. So I could actually start hacking in the beginning just on my notebook. And in the end, after the code worked, I actually dumped it onto the Raspberry Pi. Then I used uh, Sinatra um, because I actually not uh, really good at web development, so it was the easiest choice for me. Uh, I wrote a small little uh, website to generate into the user interface. And then I actually uh, controlled it via JavaScript. And with that overall, um, I could now actually go out and uh, drive around. Um, that actually worked pretty well because um, actually after just several days after I finished it, I was already healed so I could walk again. So at, uh, at that point, um, actually the talk would already be over because um, after I didn't need the wheelchair anymore, it just ended up in a corner. But as a matter of fact, Destiny came and I broke something again. But uh, it's a little bit more flexible. This time, actually, I broke my tooth. Um, so, which is uh, now fairly more painful than uh, actually the ankle. So, uh, luckily, again, uh, the doctors gave me some nails and painkillers. And with the painkillers in action, um, I had this high feeling that, wow, now I have my own wheelchair. That's not a problem at all. I don't have anything to worry. But as a matter of fact, now I actually depend on this thing. Uh, it turns out that you actually have a lot of problems with something uh, you just make for fun and then something actually you really depend on it. So I could not just walk away after my Ruby program crashed. So there were several issues. Um, I just mentioned four here. So for example, using a touch interface to control actuators is a pretty stupid idea. Uh, it's fairly unprecise. Um, you have a, a very bad feedback. Um, you can hardly get out of control. Then the wireless interface actually, yeah, it's instable sometimes. So um, sometimes the wheelchair started to drive and I could actually not stop it. Um, another thing what I didn't consider is actually that um, the way I controlled the DC motors actually worked and giving a, a constant power. And that actually depends if the ground is steep or not steep, is now falling down. So the wheelchair actually doesn't have a constant speed. It's an issue. And the thing I want to go more into detail is actually uh, the question, how far can I actually still drive? So maybe some of you um, have heard about this new thing like electrical cars and this concept of range anxiety. So that you have a car and you're actually afraid, can actually the battery last until home or until the next power source? Actually, you have the same with a wheelchair. So um, how to uh, look at that one? Well, um, I was thinking, a wheelchair should have a battery indicator. So I said there should be nothing to do for me. So where's the battery indicator of my wheelchair? Well, it is there. And there's a problem here. As you might uh, now uh, remember, I actually made some uh, <laughs> the decisions to actually remove that stuff. So at that point, I could, of course, admit it that, well, maybe it was not such a pretty smart idea. And the guys who designed the wheelchair had actually already thought about a lot of things. And I could just reconnect it. 
but um, let's not admit a mistake. Let's just build my own battery indicator. So um, how does that work? So uh, very, very simple. I don't go into electrical details here. Uh, there's just one problem. The battery has 24 volt, and you can actually indicate the load of a battery uh, by looking at the voltage and the voltage drop if it gets uh, some load on it. Uh, the problem is with MRuby and the ARM processor I'm using, I can only indicate 0 to 3.3 .3 volt. So what uh, you are usually doing then is to implement something called a voltage divider. The very simple circuit, which essentially just maps 0 0.3 volt or 0 0.2 to 2.8 maybe, depends on the resistor you use, to the 24 volt. Um, you have a curve, and the curve will be uh, linear if all your components are proper, but how the curve looks is actually... Um, Probably someone who knows really deep into uh, electrical engineering could actually mathematically calculate that easily. Uh, I'm not that kind of guy, so I experimentally actually uh, now derived that. So what I used here is again, of course, uh, Ruby, and um, again, it's very beneficial to have an IRB running on the microcontroller because you can just um, run your averaging algorithm. You can uh, switch it together with a programmable power supply. You can set a voltage, then measure, then get um, the um, approximate value, put that into a list, and then actually derive a formula from that. From there, it's uh, straightforward. So um, now you now derive uh, the way to uh, get actually the absolute voltage, and in the end, you have a very, very simple uh, Ruby uh, now method to actually uh, get um, now the relations between 0 0.3 to 0 0.24. In the end, uh, again, uh, to check if that actually works, um, I use again the MIR beam. So I use this programmable power supply. It doesn't matter. Um, the battery uh, would be the same. And um, so I can change the voltage and I can indicate it. And um, of course, I, nah, due to the reason that it's not pure Ruby, I can also use um, all kind of Ruby code, which is allowed by MRuby. Um, so that I can also check dynamically to see. Okay, so uh, with that, um, one problem less. Um, then there is a lot of other issues I had, but just to mention, so for the touch interface, I went to a gamepad. Uh, it seems to be a little bit uh, more optimized. For the redundancy, I actually used an LTE modem. So uh, you can actually, if you use two LTE modems, and you made a peer-to-peer -peer connection, you're actually short-circuiting uh, nah, the routing, so you actually only go over the base station and the EPC of the provider network, and the latency is quite low, so they actually work quite well, and for the steepness, I actually uh, worked on an odometer, which actually counts how much the wheel is actually turning, and with that I can estimate uh, the speed. And with that, I actually became not only comfortable of transporting myself, actually, to uh, now with the wheelchair, but... Um, and, um, Oh, it doesn't play. That does that. Oh, okay, good. Um, yeah, okay, it's, it's not much to say. Just now you see that the wheelchair will drive. Uh, so um, um, so I, I could not only transport on myself, I could also transport other things, like here, for example, my iPad or some Coke, or um, I could chase my son. Um, <laughs> no, no, or all the usual things you would do now, now with, with a wheelchair. Okay. Um, and at that point, again, um, actually, again, when I reached that state, my, my, my foot was nearly healed again. So I essentially, I didn't need it at that point anymore. And now I could put it again into uh, the corner and let dust settle on it. But I would expect, because I didn't become smarter over time, that the next one will probably come soon. So I, I, should, I should prepare for that. So I, I was wondering a little bit, uh, what is next? Uh, what should I look on it? Uh, one thing I noticed is actually uh, navigation. So as a matter of fact, um, if you do uh, navigation for cars, for bikes, or for uh, pedestrians, necessarily this is not the optimal way to use it now for a wheelchair. Obviously, not everywhere you can you walk, you can use a wheelchair. Not everywhere you can use a bike, you can use a wheelchair. You need specific navigations for wheelchairs. It's obvious. Um, for that, I actually um, use something called OpenStreetMap, which is also a Ruby application. Probably a lot of people have heard of you. It's actually the target of building an open database of the whole world. And the uh, great thing about this is actually that you, everybody can contribute to it, and you can define your own text. So I can say what the surface is. I'm here. Not, uh, so the guys who actually maintain that uh, do not give me any regulations what I can use. 
So there's already one project from Germany which is using that quite interestingly, which is called WheelMap. So WheelMap is a project where uh, now people are encouraged to map uh, the accessibility of locations. So for example, if I look around me here, this would be uh, quite bad uh, accessibility because uh, nobody with a wheelchair will get up these stairs. And uh, this is uh, crowdsourced. And they're actually tagging it in their own application and then push it back to OpenStreetMaps. On the other side, with this information now, you can actually do interesting things. So there's a service called Open Route Service. And they're actually using information from OpenStreetMaps, street uh, information you have feed into OpenStreetMap to actually calculate a pass. So where I now see uh, myself, and it's actually, I would like to use um, the platform I have to actually feed the system. So I've experimented with some vibration sensors and camera systems to actually detect the surfaces I'm driving over and actually feed that back to actually increase the database. So at the moment, it's open uh, route service, which then looks approximately like that for wheelchairs. Um, is mainly focused on Germany and a little bit more like uh, Europe, but um, it's not worldwide, so we need to increase the uh, data base for that one. And as you see, you get a route calculated from A to B, and uh, on the left side you also have the material of the surface, which makes a big difference. So obviously, with a wheelchair you prefer something like asphalt or concrete and not like these cobblestones, which are now also quite common in Germany. Um, so again, wheelchair optimized navigation is one thing I'm working on. Another thing is vision. So if you are like me and you actually never used RC cars uh, as a kit, um, you might actually use the wheelchair a little bit to, uh, um, to agile, I would say. So uh, you will uh, at one point for sure bump into something. If you are happy, uh, then you just bump into a wall. If you are unlucky, you actually bump into some other people and maybe move them even in the wheelchair. So I have to consider uh, protection of the wheelchair, obviously. So one thing I looked at is leader systems. So leader systems, you maybe know that these Google cars, for example, use them. So it's a light emitting device, which gives you distance measurement from a central point for 360 degree. So there are a lot of them available. As a matter of fact, I didn't find a single driver in Ruby. And I thought, okay, that, that has to change. Um, so uh, the interface is actually quite uh, simple. So they usually provide a serial interface. You can uh, control the motor, um, and then you actually get readouts over uh, the 360 degree angle about the distances. And um, so after working on that, uh, what I can now do is actually, um, I have the wheelchair, and I actually can uh, detect obstacles moving around the wheelchair. So that's of course uh, quite uh, beneficial if you are, um, uh, do not want to bump into something. You can just lower the speed the closer you get to an object, or you can stop if the object is too close. The same thing um, is, of course, not only for um, um, static environments, but also for moving environments. So obviously, if you're driving around, um, you also would like to uh, not collide with other objects. So you need to have some kind of vision, um, which is, of course, it's, it's the same system, just a different use case. So uh, you can see uh, there is actually some things you cannot really see, like things which are reflective through, but in the real environment, it actually works quite well if you just uh, estimate a little bit uh, conservative and better stop than um, now proceed. Okay, so uh, with that said, uh, concerning uh, conclusion here. So I have essentially two things to conclude. First is about the Ruby ecosystem. So, uh, I mean, uh, Yukio Matsumoto has talked about uh, now MRI, uh, how it's improving over time, MRuby and JRuby. Um, so my personal ecosystem looks actually like that. So I have this Ruby wheelchair, I have implemented different things which have different kind of complexities, different kind of needs. The data quantity of a drive system and the complexity is very low, to be honest. It's very simple code. Um, and um, then you go further and you have uh, Ruby applications like uh, WheelMap and uh, OpenStreetMaps, which have a huge amount of data because OpenStreetMaps want to categorize the whole world. So uh, the um, complexity level is different. But as a matter of fact, today, we can do on all these levels um, uh, solve our problems with Ruby. We have, of course, the MRI as the baseline, which gives us the most uh, now correct Ruby. But then we have JRuby and MRuby, which is for me the, the more important one. Uh, which actually does something to move Ruby into new environments. So one of my conclusions would be consider um, Ruby maybe for new areas where you didn't use it before. I actually do not see that many limits which Ruby cannot be used. And the last conclusion is how to improve from here. So 
I personally would be very happy, and my whole slide and everything would be completely uh, well uh, paid off if just one of you, after you come back home to your home country, um, um, would actually just um, go to wheelmap.org and maybe just uh, na, na take one element. So just say uh, your nice coffee or so, uh, what, what, uh, cafe, um, what kind of entrance barrier they have. So that, that would be already great. Um, but as a matter of fact, um, taking the world is actually not solving a real problem. It's just documenting our problems. What we really have to think about is, uh, will you improve the, uh, the environment for people who are not able actually to navigate? So, and as a matter of fact, uh, that's a difficult problem. And the reason why it's a difficult problem is because wheelchair users are a minority. So, um, I mean, I do not want to do finger pointing, but I for myself, I can talk for myself, I would not have cared about wheel map or uh, now wheelchairs if I would not have bind to a wheelchair. So, from that I conclude actually to solve this problem is actually to put everyone on a wheelchair. So, n now you would maybe be a little bit confused or maybe uh, hopefully nobody's offense, but uh, if then uh, please wait a moment and let me explain. So, obviously I'm not suggesting to go around and break everybody's leg. Uh, obviously, um, that would not scale for me. Um, <laughs> what I suggest, <laughs> what, what, what I suggest is that uh, we change the concept of a wheelchair. So at the moment, everybody, most people consider it a hassle. So it is uncomfortable to use a wheelchair. Why can we not think about a wheelchair as something which actually improves our life? For example, in these days at my work, I'm actually from time to time use the wheelchair to sit at my desk and I'm driving then maybe to the lab or to the fridge with my wheelchair. And I can do that more comfortable because I don't have to move and I can make that faster. And I'm actually good on track that I can actually even automate that. So in the future, I do not even have to think about how to come from A to B. So pushing our way forward that actually people who can walk decide to use a wheelchair instead might actually solve the problem we have of the missing infrastructure because if everybody needs to use a wheelchair, then they will also push for improving uh, that it can be used proper. And with that said, thank you very much. Uh, cool. So, do we have any questions for Daniel? Yeah. We always have a question. <laughs> Very curious person. Uh, uh, are you doing uh, motorcycle races or something? Because no. uh, how did you break your, <laughs> your leg twice? In no, no, no. It's maybe, uh, I should probably not admit that, but I have these anger faces. And uh, if uh, um, someone, is, you know, someone showed these XKCD, so if someone is wrong on the internet, I do sometimes stupid things like, for example, hit a wall. Uh, oh, okay. that, that's not a smart thing. Uh, Kicking thing. walls. That's, yeah, that's better than I, I didn't. I didn't target for the wall, but um, it was just there in the way. Yes, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit embarrassed about it, though. But I didn't make any real. No. Impressive. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Any more questions? Yeah. So I've got two. The first one is uh, you had a joystick. Did you uh, have a second port for PvP as well? So that other people could. <laughs> um, you can uh, now two people could uh, now control at the same time, but uh, um, the inputs would be uh, conflicting, so the result would not be what you want. So that <laughs> I apologize. That was the facetious question. The uh, the second one is in terms of like expense and difficulty. How hard was this for you to put together overall? Okay, uh, expensiveness. Ah, this is actually one part. Sorry to not mention that. So one thing is uh, actually also this whole wheelchair industry needs some kind of disruption because with the things I have just bought one off, I can actually build a wheelchair for um, half the price um, what a usual electrical wheelchair is built these days. Um, I'm wondering if it's something like a monopoly thing. I actually, I do not really understand why they are so expensive. But uh, with all these features I have here, I still end up cheaper than um, uh, electrical wheelchairs, which is maybe something like um, 900, 1000 RMB, which translate to Maybe 100, 120, 140 US dollars, or something like that, yeah. roughly. Yeah. Yay, patents and regulatory capture. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Yep. Um, you mentioned that 
in the OpenStreetMap, there's a log about the material of the ground. And did you, were you managing to like use some kind of detection to detect like the material? Oh, sorry, uh, I didn't un understand the question. So yes, there is. And, uh, so you can define whatever you want in OpenStreetMaps as essentially uh, a wiki for maps, but I didn't understand the question. Oh, did you, did you actually made it so you can record what's the ground underneath you? Yeah, you okay, sure? I understand the question. Okay, uh, yes, so I added um, a GPS and a system to it to track the location, and I uh, could mark specific spots as, um, for example, creating one example, a high vibration, a low vibration, but um, that actually is not sufficient. So um, that's the reason why I said that I have to combine it with a camera system because vibration you can have not only because the surface is horrible, but because maybe um, uh, there are some other stuff uh, on the ground which maybe are temporarily. So um, I worked on that, but it's actually a hard problem. Um, so I, I would like to do that. Uh, and obviously, if in the future everyone would be on a wheelchair and everybody would collect this data, that would be obvious to do. But at the moment, uh, it's it's something to play, but uh, obviously it, there's not much value if only my own wheelchair is creating this data. Well, thanks. Okay. Any other questions? Oh. Hey. Uh, so you use this gamepad to control to control the wheelchair, and I'm wondering how did it work in the crowd? So on the video that you show, it, uh, I saw that it wasn't perfect. No, no, no. Uh, the video, uh, and I still use the other one. Uh, actually, the, the steering uh, you saw in the video, the problem is actually the odometry. So actually, uh, the wheelchair um, is not um, um, stable for both wheels. For both wheels. Um, so uh, one wheel. Um, how do you call it in English? Uh, vibrates a little bit, so mm -hmm. it's uh, flickering. So um, even if you drive straight, it will diverge to one direction. So th th that's a problem I want to solve with the odometer, which actually counts the real rotation. Okay, so there was no problem with responsiveness, and even like I don't know if you were in the crowd, you could actually use uh, you yeah. could control the wheelchair with your yes. with your gay pad without being worried that it will accidentally bump into someone. I was yeah, wondering you if should in the probably crowd, be you worried, but I steering anyway because it was more convenient. Uh, you should probably be worried, uh, but I have somehow maybe a deficit on uh, worrying about things. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah I, see. <laughs> okay. I, I, I mean, okay. uh, again, uh, I, I'm living in Beijing, so I do not drive that to uh, Tiananmen Square, so because they will shoot me down immediately, or I will not drive it to rush hour. So, um, nah, okay. I, I, it's a certain, um, and of course, I do not shave my son. I just want to say that so that nobody. Is, Reporting between government. <laughs> it sure takes. Okay, I think we can take one more question if there is any. Uh, no? Oh, okay. So uh, now you've managed to remote or somehow remote control your uh, wheelchair. When, when is autonomous wheelchair coming up? Uh, so autonomous wheelchair, when will it come up now? Autonomous? Self ah, so, uh, autonomous. Uh, okay, good. Um, so, um, again, that, that's um, on the plan. So, with the uh, um, uh, leader system now, um, I actually can uh, uh, create a proper slam system. So, um, a system where I actually map an area and then can locate myself from uh, the surroundings and then navigate myself inside of that. So um, what we are doing actually uh, at work for playing is to map um, our um, uh, floor um, like that so that I can at least navigate from point to point. But that's very auto uh, very simple automotive. So it's nothing to do with these fancy machine learning stuff. So uh, nah, um, just a simple uh, nah pass uh, nah, nah, um, um, routing and then following. So, but but uh, that, that, that's, uh, that's coming. All right, I think that's all. Thank you very much, Daniel. Okay.